أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء والمرسلين السلام عليكم ابن سينا one of the great Muslim physicians and commentators on Aristotle he would go into his house uh, at night and evening okay <laughs> he's laughing and he would he would take a wine cask and put it on the side and the Quran on the other mashallah and he would start writing and reading. What's the point of this? Uh, first of all, who knows Ibn Sina? Okay. The point of this, um, the point of this is that this was the culture of the Muslims during the Golden Age. Okay, we are very much a book culture. We are very much a writing culture. Uh, the only other civilization that could compare in its sort of learning and writing was probably Victorian or Renaissance. Europe, okay, actually Victorian England or Renaissance Europe, okay, no other culture can compare to the bookish culture of the Muslims, I'll get into that later, so writing is an essential, it's something that Muslims always did, always, okay, um, in fact the first dictionary, okay, uh, the first dictionary, you guys know how it uh, came about, how? No, the, the first dictionary came about. The first dictionary in recorded history, okay? And I'm not a person that likes conspiracy theories. Right. Yesterday when one of the brothers was giving a lecture and he said a lot of historically inaccurate facts, I was cringing, okay? Because I don't like, I don't like uh, overblowing Muslim achievement, okay? We didn't beat a million people in battle. Anyway, no. anyway the first dictionaries came about because of the analysis of the words of the Quran. Okay, they're, they're called lexicons. Okay, and the first recorded lexicons that ever originated were Arabic lexicons. And you know why they made it, right? Yeah. Why? <laughs> to, un to understand the Quran. And uh, probably the first lexicon was attributed to this African guy, this African scholar. So you understand that writing and reading was a very, very much uh, an integral part of Muslim culture. Okay, because of that introduction, that's just an introduction. Okay, a few disclaimers. I'm not an effective writer. Okay, there's the thing here. But who has a blog here? Like a blog. Do you share one? Okay, so. Okay, so so the reason I'm uh, giving this talk even though I'm pretty sure there are a lot more effective writers here, okay, that I do have a regularly updating blog, okay, so then it has <laughs> quite a lot of views, okay. So if you want to, if you want to check it, it's not, you know, if you want to check it out, it's called Halal Hassan, if you want to write it down. If you, t if you type in Halal Hassan in Google, that's the first thing that comes up, okay. Right. So. <laughs> first one, okay. No, no. Okay, so uh, that's, why, that's why I'm giving this lecture, all right? But I don't know uh, about mistakes in grammar and all this other stuff. But I'll tell you how I keep on writing stuff for the blog. Okay, so why writing? Why do people write? Why, why do you think so? Keep records. Okay, keep records. Some people find it easier to express their ideas in writing rather than talking. Okay. So Yeah. Sometimes it's not about like trying to express yourself, but more like trying to organize your thoughts. I mean, uh -huh. write, but sometimes you don't write because you don't listen. Enjoyment. Enjoyment. Okay. Um, okay. All these are good points. Okay. Uh, but one of the um, and all these are good points. They should have been in the bullets in your notes. But one of the um, main reasons for writing, okay, is is to for the permanence of ideas, right? If you have an idea, right, it's going to stay in your head, correct? If you tell it to other people, it's going to probably stay in their head or probably they're going to forget it. But if you commit it to writing, right, it's always there, always, okay? The people, for example, some of the great philosophers, they didn't, first of all, they died like tragic deaths and they weren't even recognized. But later on, right, the writing was discovered and their ideas were spread, okay? One example of this is... Aristotle, the Greek philosophers, 
Okay? I'll, ta- I'll talk about the translation movement a little bit later. But the Greek philosophers, the West would not know about them, right? Because they didn't know how to speak, um, they didn't know how to speak Greek. Like England and, you know, people like that. They didn't know how to speak Greek, right? But their, for example, this is like, what, 2,000 years ago? Very long time ago. But the philosophers, they wrote their ideas down, correct? They wrote their ideas down and they passed to the hands of the Muslims. And the Muslims gave it to the world, right? So um, the point of writing is to sort of, like you, you make a mark, right? You make a mark and it's always there, correct? And the reason why we should want to write, okay, primarily for Islamic purposes, is that writing is probably the most effective form of da'wah, okay? Uh, let me ask you something. If you, if you talk to a group of people on the street about Islam, right, versus if you write a New York Times article about Islam, which one do you think is more effective? New York Times. Uh, speaking on the street, okay? No, I mean New York Times. <laughs> okay. No, it's New York Times. Um, so writing for the New York Times, right? If, if people are trying to say that Muslims aren't terrorists, right? If you tell that to your group of friends, okay, good. But if you write a New York Times article about Muslims aren't terrorists, who, who do you think people will believe more? New York Times, right? And uh, so writing has always been a means of arguing ideas, okay? The battleground for ideas. Um, changing people's views, okay? It's always been that means, okay? And the other point of writing is that it flushes out your thoughts, right? You have a lot of thoughts, right? But they're all jumbled inside your head. What writing forces you to do is it, uh, for example, um, like, you know, uh, what, what would you feel? Okay, coffee, okay? When you're making coffee, right? There's a lot of impurities in the coffee, the, the coffee beans, the coffee powder. But when you want to drink the coffee, you filter it, right? And you force it down the funnel. The same thing with writing. You have a lot of thoughts in your head, but when you have to write it down, right? You can't, you know, scribble all over the page. You have to, you have to filter it, right? And then clearly tell people what you're thinking. Okay? Any questions so far? Yeah. Okay. No, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the the point I'm trying to argue is that ideas are debated through writing. Yeah. I uh, know ideas are debated through writing, right? Like when you when you're in the battleground for ideas, you debate it through writing, right? You debate it through academic papers, you debate it through New York Times articles, correct? Okay. So <clears throat> All right, so I told you why I write Okay, some common issues with writing. What are some common issues? Shafer, what are some common issues with writing? Laziness. What is it? Laziness. Laziness. Oh, uh, explain. It's, uh, even when I struggle with this, laziness, procrastination, it's the main of <laughs> my existence mostly. Okay, cool. Not being able yeah. to Because you want to write, but you don't. You always put it off. Yeah. It's actually a section dedicated to that, huh? Going off topic. Going off topic. Okay, yeah, yeah. So the se- that's the second point in your booklet, bad organization, okay? The first point I want to talk about, though, is collecting too much data or too little data, okay? For example, when you're trying to write a research paper, what tends to happen? First of all, if you're a really good student, you collect too much data, correct? You spend, if, if your life cycle is 100, uh, 100% of the time, you spend 90% of the time just collecting data. And 10%, just taking that data, putting it on the paper. And you wonder why you got to see. Okay? That's too much data. Now, if you're a terrible student, you collect too little data. Okay? Your arguments are convincing, but there's nothing to back them up. Correct? And that's what tends to happen almost all the time. You tell, I tell you guys to write an article, okay, for example, for my blog right now. Or, you know, I'll give you like a week. You're going to write an article. That's pretty convincing. It has no backing whatsoever. It's just stuff you pulled out of your head. Well, from another place, but <laughs> okay, but mainly your head. Right? And that's what people tend to do. 
Okay? And when I see writing like that, I get infuriated. <clears throat> because, huh? I should write more than for you. Huh? I should write more, than, more for you then, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? No, no, because as I'll talk about, um, there are different types of writing, right? If you're writing something like an opinion piece, okay, that doesn't require data, then you don't need to. But if something requires data and you're making things like, you're just pulling things out of the air, you can do that while you're talking to somebody, right? I don't have to cite, uh, constantly cite stuff when I'm talking to you. I can just tell you. You trust me. Well, not really, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, not really. But um, when you're talking to someone, there's still some sort of level of trust, right? When you're writing, you don't see the person. The only thing you see are the words. So if they're pulling stuff out of their head, <laughs> right, then you become very suspicious, okay? And you stop reading. And that's what I tend to do. Um, bad organization. The other problem with writing, okay, is bad organization. And I'm going to talk about how to combat that in uh, the... Third, uh, fourth section. Okay, what's what's an example of bad organization? No transition. Okay. Yeah. If you were to write one big paragraph instead of separate paragraphs. Yeah. Like what else? One, uh, let's say one paragraph has like five different topic sentences, five different main ideas. Yeah. Uh, one of one of the problems, and I'm going to get into this, is that you want to write about something. Okay, but you, you don't actually want to write about that thing. You want to write about 10 different things. Okay, and you want to squeeze them into your essay. Okay, and your essay becomes a mess. Right? The, the problem, 99% uh, of the time, when we, like, why don't you want to write a research paper? Give me some ideas. If, if your English class tells you to write a research paper, why don't you want to write it? I want to get information. Huh? You have to get information. No, like, what, uh, what's, uh, like, what, um, why, why, do you, why do you feel... Why, do you feel, why does it feel hard it's to write a research paper? It's too much work. It's too lengthy. <laughs> no, I want to too much reading. Yeah, yeah, it's it's analyzing. Analyzing, okay. But I'll tell you, 99% of the time, it's because you don't know how to organize it. Okay? If you have no structure, you go wild. You're like, I can't think about this. Right? And that's why what he's talking about, laziness, you put things off. You have an idea in your head. Okay, I want to write a paper about, um, I don't know, give me a topic. Bananas, right? The effect, the effect of bananas on American culture, right? And then you, you think about this topic, and you're like, that's a really good topic. But then guess what? You don't know. Like, what's your thesis? What effect does bananas have on American culture? You're like, I don't know. It has some effect, right? I'll write it. I'll write it. Because why? You don't have any organization. Right? You don't even know what you want to write about, right? Therefore, you don't want to approach that research paper because you're like chaotic. Like, you're like in pieces, right? And that's probably the biggest obstacle to writing, right? You know how people say, I, I don't know how to start, yes. right? Yeah, yeah you, know how, you know about that as well. So, <laughs> no, 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 because, because um, uh, uh, you know, he tries to improve his writing. So, um, right? I don't know how to start. You don't know how to start because you, ha you haven't organized it yet, okay? The first thing that a writer does isn't open up Microsoft Word and starts to write. The first thing he does is think. Think, okay, what do I want to write about? Okay? And this, this actually happened to me. I took um, Dickens' class. Okay? Before that, I didn't used to read a lot. But, um, so that class, you guys know about um, Bleak House? Do you guys know what that is? Okay. Uh, it's considered Dickens' greatest novel. Okay? It's 700 uh, something pages. So we had to read 125 pages each, each week. Okay? So it's 20 pages every day. And uh, I read just like you would normally read a book. But you can't read that book as you normally read a book. Okay? Therefore, when the final essay topic came, I didn't know what I wanted to write about. Okay? So, so what did I even want to write? I can't think. Right? I'm just like, oh, I have these ideas. Dickin comments on uh, the purpose of life uh, through one of his characters. Very vague. Okay? And I wrote the introductory paragraph, and I got wrecked. Okay, I got wrecked. She gave me like a very, uh, very low grade. Okay, I won't tell you what it is. <laughs> if it was an A or a B, I would have told you. But so, right? Because very, very convoluted. 
very convoluted. I didn't even know what I wanted to write about. Okay? And every single sentence, the teacher would stop. And she would say, okay, how does this sentence relate to this? This is a completely different topic. Right? You're talking about the purpose of life here. And then you're talking about him wanting to get a job here. How do they relate? You don't link them. So, organization, right? Before you even start to think about writing, before you start to think about grammar rules, the question is, what do you want to write about? Okay, what do you want to write about? You think, I want to write about bananas effects in America. That's not what you want to write about. Okay, what about bananas and their effects on cultural, uh, and their effects on America? What about them? What about them was? That's not good enough. Aspect of yeah. society, right? That's not uh, the tell me the specific effects. Wait, yeah, that's what you have to do. I mean, so they're one of the only foods that's yellow. No, no. I mean, uh, like, what effects do they have on society? Yeah. 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 Like All right, I got some. Let me just yeah. draw like three topics in the abstract mind, like potential people statement. One, um, the you know kind of like production uh, type that bananas get produced kind of instilled in society inside America. The um, acceptance of like using. Oh snap! Okay, okay, okay. You're going way. I don't even understand what you said. <laughs> but no, he's on the he's on the right track. Yeah. Okay, so that could be your thesis statement. Okay. There you go. See, so like these, you're you're narrowing down, right? You're narrowing down what you want to write about, and you know what what you want to write about. Now the reason I didn't like I would have to told you about the three step model and whatever all this other stuff. Right? But that's not how people write. Yeah. Okay? When you read an article in the New York Times, they don't, <laughs> in their introductory sentence, they don't bold the thesis. Okay? And they don't list three points and three paragraphs. No. It's very natural. It's like someone's talking to you, almost. Right? Someone very intellectual is talking to you in very uh, sophisticated grammar. That's how good writing is supposed to be. Okay? You don't write like you talk. No. But when you read writing, it's like someone's talking to you. That's the sort of irony in it. Okay, the other thing is lack of proofreading and editing. I know a lot about that. Okay, um, uh, in that same class, the Bleak House class, we were supposed to put, uh, give uh, the teacher an essay every week. Okay, about the chapters that we uh, we wrote, a topic in it. My essays I did like the night before, and I kept on getting bad grades on them. And again, if they were A's and B's, I would have told you, <laughs> right? But I kept on getting bad grades on them. I'm like. Am I not a good writer? Right? It's like a dent in your ego. When you write something, oh, I can write this last minute, and you write it, and you get like a C, okay? And then you just like, screw the teacher, I'm a good writer, right? No, you're not. Okay, that's the reality. No, you're not. Okay? The, because the teacher said, she's like, you wrote this night before. I'm like, so anyway. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway. Um, if you write something, it's not enough for you to just read it again and just proofread it. Okay? Writing is a continual process. To give you an example, how many of you guys know who uh, Patrick Rothfuss is? Hmm? What does that mean? It is. <laughs> um, do, you, do you guys know the name of the wind? Never heard of it? Okay. Uh, it's a fantasy novel. Okay? He spent seven years writing all three books, and then seven years doing what? Proofreading. Proofreading. That's insane. Okay? And uh, so that just shows you the level of revision that has to go into good writing. Okay? When people write uh, very good articles online, it's not a one, it's not sort of, it's not sort of like an in-moment thing. You just write it, and then you post it online. That's what I do. Okay? That's not what professional writers do. Okay? And the, uh, the best, the most viewed articles that I wrote were actually articles that I took a lot of time in, okay? Okay, and the other common issue with writing is overtly biased, okay? Overtly biased. You know, uh, most of you guys here are Bengali, right? No. Uh, actually, all of you guys are here Bengali. Unbelievable. So, you know, you know those things, those pamphlets that, that they give out about crimes in Bangladesh? Example of overtly biased, right? The Alma League is con uh, doing genocide okay. in, in the name of secularism. 
you as soon as you read that opening sentence, you're just like, Whatever. this is not a serious article, right? I mean, it doesn't matter. That's overly biased, okay? Overly biased. You write a Dawah pamphlet. Islam is the only way, truth, and huck. And if you don't believe it, you go to hell. That's over. <laughs> that's over. <laughs> overly biased, right? Overly biased. So when you try to write, you're writing diplomatically. You're not writing overly biasedly. You're not Karl Marx, okay? You're not a communist uh, propagandist. And the other thing is poor sentence word structure. Okay, you know when people have poor sentence and word structure? When, Shayful? What? When do people have poor sentences and word structure? Who can? No, I don't have a class. No, no, no. Was he in that class that you took? That, like, for that writing class? That power, uh, something? What writing class? Uh, shameless, okay. Oh, okay. okay, here's... Uh, this is a confusing question. People have poor sentences. Yo, Rizal. People have poor sentences and word structure when they try to do too much. Okay? They're, they're like, you know, this sounds really philosophical. So they try to make it even more philosophical and Rizal's smiling because... Okay? Um, they try to make it more philosophical and then it's like complete crap, right? You read it, it's just like, wow, that, that's so deep, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> okay? <laughs> no. Good writing, it's really deep and you also know what it means. Okay? <laughs> okay? So people have poor sense of the word structure when they try to do too much. Okay? If you can't do too much, okay, if you're not Shakespeare, don't try to be. Okay? In the attempt to be, you become a crappier writer. Okay? If you stay simple, you're good. Um, okay, mistakes in grammar. Uh, first of all, I don't know anything about grammar, so I'm not going to go over this. Uh, like, really quickly, redundancy. Okay, what is redundancy in writing? Too much. Like extra words. Uh, extra words, okay. Same things over and over. Or, say, or something else. Repetition. Repetition, or it, it's commonly in a sentence. Starting the sentence with the same thing. No, that's fine, but, okay. That's fine if you don't And one of the biggest problems is when you can say something, uh, actually, no, that's not redundancy. But yeah, yeah, you're right. A lot of times when people try to make points in writing, right, uh, especially you guys and me, like our level of writers, okay, when we try to make an argument, we make the argument, and then we make it again, and then we make it again. We say, keep on saying the same thing, right? We're not saying anything different. You guys, you guys do that in research papers? That's especially true in research papers. Okay? So, yeah. So, in regards to grammar, the way you can improve your grammar, guys, is just by reading a lot. Just yeah, I'm going to get to that. Once you read, the more you read, the more you see what actual good writing is. And you know what sounds right. Yeah, and you know what sounds yeah. right. So, when you read something that sounds wrong, it's almost yeah. likely that. Yeah. <laughs> Grammar seek. <laughs> Guru Gardawara. Huh? You have a question? No. Oh, no. You pointed at me. Alright, anyway. Okay, run on sentences. I don't know what that means. So, uh, yeah, run on sentences. Go ahead, Shafu. Yeah, when you don't end. Cliches and overused expressions. That is the most common, you know, when I. Yeah. Oh, at our level of writers, that's the most common form of uh, terrible writing. Yeah. Can you give a couple examples of that? Uh, can't think of any on the top of my head. You use the word verily. So that that's probably. Was, that, that okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. But um, the yeah, that that's the problem. Cliches so, and yeah. Give us some examples. Like graduation like, speeches. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, uh, Faisal has a very good uh, example. Graduation speeches. Most overly used, cliched form of uh, writing that ever existed. Okay? If you look at one graduation speech and the next, you can't find a difference between them. It's like plagiarism, right? If you try to look at some of the sentences. Uh, follow your dreams. Uh, I don't know, some other crap that they say. But, <laughs> <laughs> right? But like, all this other stuff. Okay? Or, and, yeah, life is too short. Seize every moment. You don't have enough time. 
uh, YOLO. YOLO. <laughs> this is like, uh, very overused cliches. Okay. Okay. Very, very overly used cliches. Okay. Try to avoid cliches. Okay. Now the other thing is archaic language, but um. I'm not going to get into that because in some instances it's okay. Okay, you, some instances you can use the word verily, as he said. Um, weak transitions and lack uh, thereof. Okay, this is this was my biggest problem. Okay, weak transitions. Why? Because I would say something, and the next sentence would be something completely unrelated to the thing I just said. Every single sentence that you have, you it must flow. It's like a it's like a tree, right? This this is the top. Every sentence has to be related to the previous one. Every single sentence. Okay? If it's not related, it's in a new paragraph. And in the same way, every paragraph has to re be related to the uh, previous paragraph. And if you're writing a book, every page has to be related to the previous page. It has to keep that consistency. It has to. Okay? Exactly. And not only are you jumping point of views, you, you do something called choppy writing, okay? That's my, you do something called choppy writing. Um, and you know what, when that happens? It's when you want to say something concisely, correct? When you, what does concisely mean? A small amount. When you're trying to fit something, for example, college essays, things like that, when you're trying to fit something into one page, right? That's when choppy writing and this lack of transition happens, okay? So... If you want to improve that, you got to start writing little amounts, okay? That was my biggest problem. I used to write too much, okay? Like too much uh, run-on sentences, cliches and overuse expressions, redundancy, all of those things, okay? <clears throat> all right, so tips for effective writing. Planning, okay, planning. You know how we talked about organization, right? How can you organize better? If you have a topic for writing, how can you organize better? Brainstorm. Outline. Outline. Okay. Anybody else? Brainstorm. Outline. Look at your book, guys. It's right there. Yeah. What else? It's in the book, guys. Just specific. If you have, if you have a topic, okay, any topic, even if it's a story, okay, a story is a topic too. If you're writing a novel, whatever, the first thing you do is general, okay? What is this thing about, okay? Why do I want to write it, okay? Uh, who's in it, right? Or if it's an essay, what's my argument, okay? What's the point of this? After someone reads this, what are they supposed to get out of it? General. And then what you do is you go to the next level, right? What are the specific points I want to argue about? And you go to the specifics. What data do I want to use, okay? And then you go to the more specifics. Which place in the writing do I want to put the data in? Right? Do you guys understand that? You guys understand? So the banana example. Okay? What's the general, the general brainstorming thing? The effect on society. The effect? What, bananas, uh, what does bananas have? Uh, what effect does bananas have on uh, society? That's the general. Correct? What's, what's the one under that? Potassium, <laughs> potassium is good for exercising. <laughs> Make more, uh, like, okay, so the, the next step under it is the things you want to argue, right? And the steps under it are the data you want to use it for supporting. If it's a story, right? If it's a story, for example, if it's a story, right? The first thing you want to think about is, okay, what's, what's the point of the story? For example, Lord of the Rings. What's the point of that story? Okay, if you could summarize Lord of the Rings in one sentence, what it would be? What would it be? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yes, you're right. What? That's not one. That's a word. Okay. Okay. You know. Okay. In Lord of the Rings, if you could summarize it, okay, it's just a fight between good and evil. It's that general. Okay. Super general. So, uh, so uh, it would go something like this. I want to write something that's about some conflict between good and evil. That's super, super general. And like, okay, what is it a conflict about? Okay, so in this case, it's about the rings. Or, I don't know, it's too confusing. Um, and the, 
<laughs> too, <laughs> too long. And the third thing is, how does this conflict play out, right? Who are the people involved? And then the fourth thing is, where does it take place? So you keep on, and this, all these things are part of the first general thing. Remember, because this is a big novel. And then the next thing is, what are the specific events in the conflict, right? And the more specific thing, right, is who does what in what specific point in the conflict, right? And the more specific thing is, what do people do before the conflict? What is, what is the build-up to the conflict? So it's like, you keep on, you keep on digging, okay, until you scratch the very bottom, and then you work, work your way out by writing. You guys get that? All this is planning inside your head, okay, or outlining. All this is planning. You're not actually writing an essay now, okay? Any questions? Nobody? Okay. All right, all right. drafting, okay, drafting. Now, if you have this vision inside your head about what you want to write, okay, what you want to write is you want to write for yourself, meaning you don't care about any mistakes that are being made. You don't care about how choppy it sounds, right? What you want is something on the paper, right? What you want is something on the paper. The revision comes later. You guys agree with that? Yes. The revision comes later. You don't write uh, one single page of Lord of the Rings in one go, in one sitting. You, you don't, okay? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so, all right, and then, um, okay, so you write for yourself, and then when, you, when you're in the process of drafting, you write for others, meaning you want to write it cleanly, uh, make sure the grammar is okay. Okay, so revising, it's sort of the same thing, I don't know why he, you know, uh, put these, huh? Yeah. All right, so the next point that I want to talk about is writer's block. Okay, Shafe will tell, tell us about this. Laziness. Uh, so, so is mine. Yeah. Right? And um, p uh, people, there's, there are two types of writer's block, right? when you have an idea and you want to start writing, or when you're writing and you run out of ideas, okay? And the second part is the, probably the most dangerous part, okay? Um, so, uh, what was it going? Okay, okay. Now, in How to Read a Book, okay, there's, there's a book called How to Read a Book. I didn't, I didn't actually read the book, okay? So, <laughs> in How to Read a Book uh, by these famous uh, psychologists called Adler, okay? And what's the other guy's name? Yeah. But anyway, he says, right, that every single skill, there is different levels of mastery. Okay? You begin as the novice. Okay? You're, the, you're, you're like the new guy. Uh, novice. Whatever. See? Novice. See? See? Yeah, yeah. You begin as the novice. Okay. So, you begin as the neophyte. When <laughs> okay? Okay? You begin as the, as the new guy in town. Cliche. Okay. You begin as the novice who's uh, first introduced to something. Okay? And um, uh, Adler calls these people... What do you call these? Um, I forgot the term. What does he call them? Okay, beginners. Yeah. Begin okay, beginners and then what? what's after? What's after beginners? No, no, no. Like Adler's skill mastery. There's beginners, there's the... Oh, oh, okay, I got it, I got it. So, you begin as the beginner, okay? You have terrible grammar, you don't know how to write, okay? You start reading a lot, okay? You suddenly get in interested in books. Uh, you find that there is something called the English language, and then you start writing, okay? Beginner, okay? And then you become something called a dabbler. You know what a dabbler is? Dabbler is that guy who just discovered tennis, okay? And... He, you know, he's with his pot, pot belly and everything. He buys like, uh, you know, what's his name? Uh, this is not an attack on you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because um, I'm using tennis, that's why. It's because uh, this is actually from Hamza Yusuf's lecture on how to read a book, and he uses this specific example, which is why I'm using it. You know what a dabbler is? A dabbler is the person who just discovered tennis, 
he goes to the store and he buys Roger Federer's racket and he buys like two hundred dollar shoes. Okay, and he's he's got the shorts and his pop belly on. He's like, yo, let's go play some tennis. Okay, and then after the first few weeks, right, he realizes that he sucks. Okay, and he's just like, and his friends come to him. He's like, yo, what happened with your interest in tennis, man? He's like, nah. Uh, got, he's just like, nah, I can't really play tennis that well. Uh, so, but you know what else is cool, right? And then he tells you of another obsession. That guy is a dabbler. Okay, he dabbles in things. Okay, he's not, he doesn't, he's not really interested in learning it. He just got, he just got an interest in it and he just, you know. When the going gets tough, the dabblers go away. Okay? What's a dabbler again? Okay, give me an example of a dabbler. Except for the one I used. Okay, I get interested in soccer. I learned that I can't control the ball or play or whatsoever. I just stopped learning because I suck at it. But I bought like hundreds of stuff, um, hundreds of dollars of like equipment. Mm. There you go, that's a, that's a dabble. There you go. Hey, you know, maybe I should try ping pong. You see, there you go. Or, and or then, for someone who's interested in the history of Zelda, and then he decides to yeah. switch off the history of the Crusades. Yeah. Or like, I used to have a Okay, chill, chill. No, no personal attacks. Okay. <laughs> okay, what else, what else? Or like, I used to like math as a subject. Now I hate it, now I can't watch it. Okay. What what else? Front runners. Front runner, there you go. Front runners are dabblers, right? When the going gets tough, when the Heats can't win, they suddenly switch their allegiance to the Cavs. Okay. So anyway, I don't know anything about basketball. So anyway, cricket. Yeah. So dabblers are people, right? Dabblers get filtered out. Okay. Dabblers get filtered out. Then the, there's another category of learners called the hackers. Okay. And you know, you know what a hacker is? He's that guy, right? Uh, the tennis example again. The same guy with the pot belly and everything. Uh, <laughs> he's that guy who, he can play tennis pretty well. Okay, he can play tennis reasonably well. And he just continues playing tennis. And he doesn't, like his skill level stays at that place. And he just occasionally plays with his friends. But his interest level is always there. Okay? And he always finds new ways. For example, the dabbler, when the going gets tough, he drops out. The hacker... He finds a way to to keep on going, and then he finally, you know, learns, you know, uh, well, yeah. The the f the other category on top of that is the master. Okay, you know what happens in the master? The master is the person who passes this thing called a learning plateau. Okay, and after they pass this thing called a learning plateau, they do the activity so well that they don't have to think while they're doing it. You mean like Messi? Huh? Like Messi, right? Do you really think that Messi's thinking, I'm going to go this way? No. It's, it's just inside him that when he sees three defenders come, just, <laughs> just out of nowhere, right? right? Well, or, when, or when Roger Federer has a ball that bounced right here, right? For me, I would just go like this, right? I'd just give up. But he just flick of the, turns back around, right? It's, he doesn't need to think about it. It's just inside him, right? It's just inside him. Huh? <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's just inside him, right? And we, uh, like, uh, sports people are really good examples of this, right? You, you think, oh man, LeBron's so good. No, he's just a master, right? He's just, a, he's been doing it so much, he's passed this learning plateau, and it's just instinctive, okay? He doesn't even need to think how to shoot the ball. He sees the opening, right? Shoots it, done, right? That's a master. And that's the level that most of us can't reach, unfortunately, because of this thing called learning plateau. And this writer's block is learning plateau, okay? Now here's something crazy that Adler says in How to Read a Book. During the learning plateau, you know what a learning plateau is? Who can tell me? It's a cap. It's a cap, okay. Oh. Uh, like, do you want me to give an example? Or? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Defend. Not make him cross me out. Yeah. Follow from him. And make it go to him. Okay. Like I learn instead of like just. That, that's not. That's not. A, that's learning a new skill. Uh, <laughs> what? What's a learning plateau? Uh, Do you know, Shivu? Uh, just kind of being stuck where you are. Kind of being stuck where you are. When you're keep when you keep on doing this this activity and then you're like I'm not getting any better, right? It's like. I have a pretty good example. 
Like yeah. Dota 2, do you know? Yeah, yeah I know Dota 2. There's a <laughs> crazy, crazy cap like that. Uh-huh. You get to a point where, like, okay, I'm pretty good, but these guys are, like, are amazing. way up there, and, like, I can't touch them. Right. Like, how do I get better? And you stay there for a really long time. That's exactly what a learning plateau is, right? When you, it, you keep on doing, putting so much effort into it, and it just doesn't seem to budge, mm-hmm. right? It's like you're stuck at, like, 190 for benching. Right. I don't know anything about benching, so. <laughs> I don't think anything about the gym in general. Anyway, so, but Adler says, yo, chill. Adler says in his book, right, how to read a book, he says that during the learning plateau, you're actually learning. Right? Who said that? <laughs> right? During, during this period that you, that you think that you're not learning, you're actually learning. Right? You're actually learning to become a what? Master. A master. Uh, right? You're actually learning. And then the, he says that if you keep on persisting on doing this, right? Maybe it takes one year. Maybe it takes two years. After, if you, as soon as you like, pass the learning plateau, everything starts to click. Right? So the learning is sort of like this. And you approach this plateau, and you keep on through it, and then your learning just spikes up like that. Okay? There are some people, like... Um, uh, like uh, readers, for example, like I'm not a fast reader, but like professors, you guys know, like prof- uh, intelligent professors, they like a new paper comes out, right? And they'll be like, okay, I'm excited to read the paper. They read the paper, okay, in like one sitting. And it's just like, okay, and they comment on it. A full understanding just by reading it once, okay? You try to read a research paper and you don't know how, what the half, half these words mean. Even if you know what those words mean, you don't even understand what they're saying, right? right? Yeah. But that professor, mm, 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 mm. done, right? Gotcha. Same thing with a writer, okay? Stephen King, he can sit down, uh, get up early in the morning, sit for five, four hours, finish half a book, okay? Cool. And you're just like, what, okay? Uh, George R. R. Martin, I think he's reached a learning plateau because he's not releasing his book. <laughs> so, so anyway, okay. So after the learning plateau is when everything starts to click. Tennis, for example, tennis. When I first started playing tennis, I try to hit the ball, it flies over. Try to serve it, flies over. Okay. Uh, try to touch the ball, flies over. So it's, <laughs> it's like crazy, right? And then I'm like. In, in fact, when I first started playing with uh, Shafel, Faisal, and them, you know what I said? I used to be a huge liar back then. I'm like, the courts are actually bigger, okay? <laughs> I'm like, yo, in, in the actual tennis, man, the courts are like tw- 20 times bigger. Because every time I would serve, it would fly over, right? But now, when I try to serve, I don't think about it, okay? In fact, you know how you disrupt a tennis player? During the match, uh, you go up to him and you say, yo, bro, I really love your serve. Can you show me how to do it, right? And he's going to try to show you a serve. And the next time he serves, he's going to think about it. And he's going to screw up. Right? He's going to screw up. Correct? All right? So after you pass this learning plateau is when uh, Adler says that you're learning all these skills. Right? You're learning, you're learning in the learning plateau. But after you pass it, after you pass it, these skills, for example, in the tennis, the forehand. Right? Tennis, the backhand, the serve. Right? After you learn all these things and you pass the learning plateau, all these three things combine. And you can do them unanimously. Right? But um, I'm a hacker in tennis. Shafel's a hacker. Uh, Faisal's a hacker. If we were masters, we wouldn't be playing in the ATP tour. <coughs> but right? uh, but uh, the hacker, he doesn't go through a learning plateau. He just uh, combines these skills together. But the master, he does these skills in such proficiency Right? He does these skills in such proficiency that learning a new skill is just like putting on a new shirt. Okay? Oh, uh, you want to try out this trick? He's like, yeah, sure. And then he just puts on the shirt, which is the trick, and then he knows it. Okay? That's what a master can do. Right? Like For example, uh, Ronaldinho. Yeah. There's this guy called um, Richard Feynman. Okay? Richard, you guys know who that is? No. Richard Feynman? He is the Nobel, Nobel Prize winner, amazing physicist. Is he a physicist, though? He's also a computer scientist. Oh, really? Uh, he's also, I don't even, 
He's too many things. Okay? <laughs> let's just say let's just leave it at he's too many things. He'll go into he's studying physics in one moment, dealing with hyd hydrogen atoms or whatever. I don't know what they do. And then the um what do you call it? the computer science association or whatever talks to him. Yo, fix up our computer. And then he just invents something. Right? He just goes over. He doesn't know anything about computers. He just invents something. He's picking up these skills so quickly, right? As if he's just putting on new, new clothes, okay? So the point of all this, okay, is that when you approach a writer's block or you don't want to write, if you force yourself to write, and even if it's bad, it's what? You're, still about you're, you're, you're learning. You're learning. Yeah. you're learning. You're learning. Even if the writing's bad, you're learning, okay? And I'm going to conclude... Uh, how much time do I have? I'm way okay. Okay. Sound tips to improve. Before you write, you should do what? Read. Okay. Before you, uh, not like research papers and stuff. Obviously, like like if you want to write, like if you want to write a novel, if you want to write articles and whatever, right? Read. Okay. You okay? You want to write an argument about why Pokemon is the greatest anime that's been ever made? Okay. Okay, okay, chill, chill. Okay, why Dragon Ball Z is the greatest anime yes, that's ever yeah, made? Okay, okay. Relax. Keep your pants. Keep your pants on, guys. Um. Okay. Yeah. Please. Uh. Hello. You want to write an article about that? Okay, read something similar. Right. Read some. Why are you trying to reinvent the wheel? You want to write a fantasy novel? Read a fantasy novel. Like, bro, it's that simple. Okay? You want to write articles and arguments, persuasive essays? Read articles and arguments and persuasive essays. You want to write a research paper? Read a research paper. Yeah, Rahad, what's up? Okay. Right? So, okay? So read, okay? Our culture, okay? Our, the Islamic culture is a reading culture. Okay? And the point, the why we're in this state is because we neglected that culture. Okay? You know, when Dickens was writing, what was your, you know, when, what do, uh, when do people read Dickens these days? When you're forced to, right? When you're forced to in English class. You know when Dickens was writing? They were, they were core, uh, like, uh, published in a magazine. He was a popular writer. Can you believe that? He was a pop, he went on tour in America. Okay? And people would listen to him for like hours, just reading from his book. And you're just like, what? Right? You know the Federalist Papers? Federalist Papers? Uh, people study them in like graduate classes now, okay? They were newspaper op-eds. You know what op-eds are? Like, you know a New York Times article? They were newspaper New York Times article for the general masses, okay? That's like the, the sophistication that people had before, like we're gradually losing it. Why? Because we don't read anymore, okay? We just don't read, okay? So please try to read, okay? And don't, just don't limit it to like, um, just like some corny Islamic book where they talk about like halal and haram and they go like uh, you can partake of the food <laughs> when you know like uh, like read good things okay read good things no good islamic books okay so so read okay read if ikra there you go the first commandment okay that allah uses is read okay and with that i have to tell you everything that i told you so far okay it's going to be much easier for you to apply if you read, okay? It's easy to think that you're a good writer. It's very easy to think, okay? But then, when people, when people tell you, no, this is not good writing, then it's like a dent in your ego, right? You're not a good writer. You are not a good writer. I'm not a good writer, okay? R you get better, right? You get better the more sophistication that your writing has and the easier it is for you to write, okay? If you're stand, sitting there in the computer <laughs> with, without your shirt off, uh, doing an all-nighter, trying try to write, a, <laughs> trying to write an essay, you're just like, uh, and then it takes you like uh, 20 hours to crunch out one paragraph, and then you finally finish the paper. You're just like, wow, I'm such a good writer. I like, and then your teacher gives you like an F. You're like, but I'm a good writer. I spent 20. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. If you want to be a better writer, read, okay? And all these things that I told you will fall into place, inshallah. So if you want to be a good writer, you should do what? Read. Read. Okay. So, Jazakallah, Barakallah, Fikum. Uh, thank you for listening.
Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Anything good I said is anything good I said is from Allah and the other things are from myself and the devil. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Yo, you were sleeping.